And AI software can do all sorts of things better than humans. And we're definitely moving to a point where we can create realistic simulations. So let me just summarize a little bit of it is yes, there will be computers that are conscious. Now, why is that? It's because an IUOC, Individuated Unit of Consciousness, can log on and make the choices for a avatar that's silicon-based, a computer, or one that's hydrocarbon-based, like a human. As long as that silicon-based avatar has choices that are meaningful, that would help that Individuated Unit of Consciousness grow up and evolve. That's the whole point of the simulation. So yes, you end up with a computer that has free will, and free will isn't all that hard to generate in a computer. Um, we can talk about that a little bit if you like. But you have a computer with free will, and if that computer has choices that are interesting to consciousness, then an IUOC will log on and play those choices. In other words, will be the player, make all the choices for that avatar. So now the computer just becomes a different kind of avatar. Just like there's humans and there's dogs and cats and bumblebees, they're all different kinds of avatars. And there can be silicon-based avatars as well. So yes, matter of fact, we've already have some of that. It's just not at the advanced human level yet, but it will be. It's not, we're not that far away from it. And these programs that you're showing, and there's there's a program that Google has that uh, is a language program that can speak. They've put it, they've, they've lit a train on the internet, sent it out on the internet, and look at the internet until you kind of understand what's going on there. And you can have conversations with it. And it sounds like it could be conscious, which brings up a question. How can you tell whether a computer is conscious or not? And Unfortunately, the answer to that is you can't tell precisely. You can never tell with 100% certainty. You can't tell with 100% certainty whether I'm a computer or not. Or I can't tell whether you're a computer or not. The basic rule is that if it you know, acts like a human, speaks like a human, uh, um, you know, what is it, quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, uh, flies like a duck, then it is a duck. So once it approximates humans enough that humans cannot really tell whether it is AI or human, then we'll call that conscious. Yeah, but, but Tom, I'm, I'm talking not just about like a robot, like a single individual mm -hmm. conscious computer. I'm talking about I create a simulation on my computer, which has a billion people in it, kind of like The Sims, like a very, very advanced mm -hmm. form of Sims, like using Unreal Engine 5 or whatever it is in the future, 6, 7, 8. So they have a, a world that looks completely real, and I can program it to, to do all the things that our world does, and there were little digital beings in it um, that are, you know, maybe I programmed them similar to be how human beings are, and they're walking around in there. Will, will they ever get to the point that they feel that they're in a real world? That's, that's really okay. what I wanted to okay. know. Okay, it's a really the same answer, just a little different twist to it. If the characters you develop have free will, which means their choices are not algorithmic, you know, only they know what their choice is going to be, because let's say you have a couple of neural networks that each represents each one. You have a set, <clears throat> a matrix of, of neural networks that makes up the decision-making part. So that's enough to qualify for free will, you know. Uh, free will is free in as much as it gets to make its own choices. There is no algorithmic says that, oh, this thing must make this choice in this situation. If that's the case, then there is no free will. You know, that's hardwired. But if what that thing chooses is of its own volition, in other words, nobody really, there is no rule that says it has to choose anything in particular. It gets to choose from its own experience, it decides, <clears throat> which neural nets do that. So if your characters are modeled with neural nets that give them free will choice, and if the things that they have to do, the choices they have to make are interesting to consciousness, then an individuated unit of consciousness could play the choices that your character makes. You see, so that would give you conscious characters in that sense if you made such a thing. 
but they would have to be interesting enough that consciousness would want to play them. And if we had thousands of such things, then maybe consciousness is finite, it's not an infinite system. It may pick and choose which ones it thought were the most, you know, uh, the most efficient and effective for growing and learning. So it might avoid some and go to others if there were that many choices. It's hard to say, but yes, that's what you'd have to do to get a, to end up making a, a virtual reality in which you had characters that were conscious. You'd have to have them have free will through the way they're made, and you would have to give them choices that they could make that were interesting to consciousness. Then consciousness would make the choices. So consciousness only comes from one thing. You don't build consciousness. You don't build it and make it happen. You offer a platform that allows choices that consciousness is interested in, and consciousness then logs on to play those characters. So that's the way it's done. So yes, that's possible. Then what you have is a virtual reality inside a virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And those characters inside that virtual reality that you made might get together and decide to make another virtual reality within their virtual reality, within this virtual reality. And again, if they had free will choices that were not algorithmic, and if they had interesting choices, then conscious could play those characters too. You see? So it's not really an efficient way to go about creating virtual realities in the way that if you have nested virtual realities, you have a lot of dependence. So let's say you have five nested virtual realities. Well, that last one, number five, if something goes haywire, if there's a, uh, you know, the, the, the server has to reboot back up in, you know, level three, well, everything from there down, you know, suddenly disappears. So it's not efficient from a computer science standpoint to have a lot of nested virtual realities. They become very fragile. But uh, it'd be better just to have independent virtual realities doing whatever you want to have them nested. But yes, it's possible. There's nothing that says that can't be done other than the fact that if you go too far with it, it gets very inefficient from a computer science viewpoint. But yes, it's possible to have a virtual reality inside of a, another virtual reality. There is just one consciousness system and anything that looks attractive to it as far as playing that character, it can log on and do that. After all, it's all existing in the larger consciousness system, in that computer. That's the source of all of it.